How's it going folks? Stu here. I'm stood up in my living room. Just thought, hey, let's mix things up. You know, why not? I'll just do this whole thing from here. Review from back. I'm not going to do that, but you know, I could. That's the point. I promise that is the first and last time I'm ever going to walk towards you while talking because that was... Look, we are not here to talk about my legs keeping me stood upright. We are in fact here to chat about a new one which I caught at the film festival which I've been very excited to check out ever since it got a lot of buzz at the festivals it was showing at previously in the year. That one is Molly Manning Walker's directorial debut, I believe, How to Have Sex. And yeah, this was something. So How to Have Sex, as I just mentioned, directed and written by Molly Manning Walker. And it's essentially a look at a girl's holiday to Malia. I never went on the whole like lads holiday style thing. So like my kind of knowledge of that side of things starts and ends here. But no doubt a bunch of people watching this, if you're from the UK, it's a very specific thing to be doing. You go out when you're younger. You drink a lot over the weekend. There is a culture of sort of binge drinking abroad from Brits on these lads holiday style things. And it's very, there's like a dark undertone to it all that I think everyone sort of knows about and everyone has witnessed, but never really gets talked about that much. And that's where this film comes in, shining a light on sexual assault and rape, these things that are happening in these environments through the lens of a young girl on one of these holidays with her friends. And the first thing that I really loved about Molly Manning Walker's, I'm gonna say her full name every time, it's, it's just that fun to. But what I loved about Molly Manning Walker's direction here and her approach to this story is that it's a very kind of just, I suppose, upfront, bare bones way through it all. It's not so much interested in sort of, I guess, hiding these themes behind any dramatic devices or any artistic creative decisions. Really, it is just kind of showing this situation as it would unfold. And that makes for an incredibly authentic and realistic feeling look at young teenage sexual assault, rape, that environment. It, it comes to light in a very borderline documentary look at a group of friends moving through this world. It's impactful, not least for showing this situation and seeing these things on screen in the way it's done, but also in the way that it shows how people are able to kind of look the other way, I suppose, when they know something wrong is going on and how we shouldn't look the other way when we know something's going wrong. But also through the lens of the central character here, Tara, it's a really devastating look at coming to terms with something yourself. And I think the central performance here is one of my favorite things about the film in the way that it is able to bring those things to light here without ever feeling too showy or too obvious. Mia McKenna-Bruce plays Tara in the film. She's the character that we follow throughout the film in this central group of friends. She is so good in this film. I just, she sort of taps into that young teenage girl kind of naivety and obnoxiousness to it all, which is obviously heightened in the Malia world, the Malia environment around them. But she's also brilliant in dealing with the sort of darker sides of the character and the story, or the more emotional sides of the story, where, as I said, she's coming to terms with something that has happened to her in the film that is terrible, and it never feels showy specifically, which is fantastic from her and crucial from her in this film. Without spoiling too much, there's a scene between her and a character towards the end of the film, and there's this kind of nod and head shake at the very same time thing that she does that I haven't been able to stop thinking about. It's such an amazing acting choice here that so perfectly captures everything that the film's going for in her character and that she's going for in her character. This really devastating sort of clashing of wanting to come out and say something, but wanting to just kind of shut it down in your head and compartmentalize it as well. It's a very complicated human thing that's happening in all of our heads whenever we go through any trauma. And she just, she's so good at encapsulating that in a very physical way in that moment. Loved her, loved her performance in this film. She's really, really amazing. Ultimately, it is just an incredibly believable and natural film to watch. But it never loses focus on that central perspective from Tara as a character. Uh, and I think that's what's able to create such an unsettling environment in the film when everything that's actually happening in the film around this character is telling her to have a fun time, telling her to have a good time, right? In a way which I think feels very accurate to how sexual assault and rape cases are able to materialize in society anyway, it, it's very good at kind of almost lulling you into 
a false sense of security and then slipping in things under there that remind you of the unsettling dark stuff we're watching. And it's a really impactful way of tackling this from a writing and direction front because I think it forces us to confront certain realities about how people interact with each other in different environments and how environments might allow people to think they can get away with doing fucking criminal shit. And it makes for a somewhat challenging watch, not in that it feels kind of distanced. I think when you talk about challenging films from a lot of art house films in particular, sometimes that just means it, it's a little bit hard to get into or a little bit hard to decipher or work out or get into, connect to emotionally. I don't mean that here. I mean, challenging quite literally in the sense of, it, you know, it's tough to watch this sort of laid out so clearly to you. That is, I think, the film's sort of importance and, and why it feels like a really vital film to have been made and to have been made like this. I was just left incredibly impressed by Molly Manning Walker's ability to create a film which so obviously feels like the exact way she wanted to do it. It never feels like that sort of first time feature director thing where, I don't know, compromises are being made to fit certain things in or, it, or it's going to places that it feels like it needs to go just to satiate a certain viewer audience. It absolutely feels like a film which is very pointed in what it's trying to do and is doing it so effortlessly, so wonderfully. And that's ultimately what I look for in directorial debuts, films that come out absolutely smash it and then leave you just thinking on it for, for a long time. And this is a film which has absolutely sat with me ever since I saw it at the festival a few weeks ago now. But what about you guys? Have you seen How to Have Sex? Did you catch it at the festival? Have you seen it elsewhere, wherever it's been showing at festivals in the year? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below and we'll have a little chat. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. The button is down there for that, as well as links to my socials, my letterbox, my Twitter, all of that good stuff. Links are down there. I will see you guys very, very soon for some more thoughts on more films. May well be stood up next time. Who knows? We're going to keep things mixed up. Keep you on your tippy toes. But until next time, I need to go and sit down. I am truly not a fit person. My knees are screaming at me. I've only been stood up for like 20, 25 minutes and I need to sit down. Mm -hmm.